Ramayan, the story of Diwali. This is the story of Diwali from India, which is thousands of years old. Long, long ago, in the kingdom of Ayodhya, there lived a king called Dasharat. The great king Dasharat performed special rituals, giving offerings into the holy fire with the hope of getting worthy heirs. Out of the leaping flames appeared a radiant figure holding out a golden pot full of milk and rice. The king received it gracefully and shared it amongst his three queens, Kaushulya, Haike and Sumitra. Soon he was blessed with four sons. Rama was born to the oldest queen, Kaushulya, Bharata to the youngest and most indulged queen, Kaike, and the twins, Lakshmana and Shatrugna, to Queen Sumitra. Following the traditions of the court, young Rama and his brothers were sent to a hermitage to start their apprenticeship under the guidance of great gurus. Rama's skills in archery soon became a legend. In another kingdom called Mithila, there lived a princess called Sita. Sita grew up not only with grace and beauty, but also showed powers unheard of in ordinary men and women. In her youth, when Sita was playing in her palace, she saw a wonderful golden bow. It was the great bow of Shiva. Sita picked up the bow with utmost ease and started playing with it. When her father Janaka saw this, he was astonished and he decided to marry Sita only to a man who could match her ability. But how was he to find such a man?
When Sita was at an age suitable for marriage, King Janaka held a special event and declared that the man who could lift the enormously heavy bow and string the bow at both ends would be eligible to marry his daughter Sita. Great emperors and kings came from faraway lands and dismally failed to move the bow even an inch. Many men tried, but they all failed. Finally, Rama stepped forward, and as he tried to string the bow, the mighty Shiva's bow snapped with thundering sounds. The king was impressed with Rama's great strength, and he immediately agreed that Sita should marry the handsome Prince Rama. A magnificent wedding feast was held. Prince Rama and his newly wedded beautiful wife Sita returned to the kingdom of Ayodhya.
Queen Kaike, the mother of Bharata, was poisoned by her cunning maid companion, a hunchback woman, Mantra. She convinced Kaike that if Rama was to be crowned king, then she, Queen Kaike, would lose all status in the monarchy, as Kaushulya, Rama's mother, would be the queen mother. So when King Dasharat decided to crown Rama as the new king, Rama's stepmother, Kai Kei, intervened. She demanded that Dasharat should keep his promise to her, which he had made to her earlier, and grant her two boons. These boons were promised to her as, sometime in the past, Queen Kai Kei had saved King Dasharat's life on the battlefield, and he was grateful for this. The first boon she demanded was, I want my son Bharata to be the king after you. As the second boon, she wanted Rama to be sent in exile to the forest for 14 years. Hearing Kaike's demands, Dasharatha felt very upset and distressed. When Rama realized the situation, however, he willingly accepted the wishes of his parents with devotion and prepared to go into exile. Both his wife, Sita, and his devoted brother, Lakshmana, joined him in his long journey away from Ayodhya. At that time, Bharata and Shatrugna were away from the palace. Not very long after, the distraught old king Dasharat died. Bharata and Shatrugna were summoned back to the palace immediately. Kaike told her son Bharata was to be king. However, Prince Bharata refused to accept the throne and went to the forest to find Rama. When Bharata found Rama, he told him of his father's death and asked Rama to return to Ayodhya and be king. No, said Rama, I must keep the promise made to our parents and I will not return until the 14 years have passed. He insisted that Bharata should go and rule Ayodhya in his absence. 
At last, Bharata requested Rama to give him his wooden sandals. I will place them on the throne to show the people that you are the true king. And I will look after the kingdom until you return, said Bharata. Such was Bharata's love and devotion towards Rama. Failing to convince Rama, Bharata returned to Ayodhya. So Rama, Sita and Lakshmana continued to live in the forest. It was a beautiful place with gently swaying trees, peacocks, ducks and many lovely animals. One day in the forest, a female demon 
Shirpanka, happened to see Rama and Lakshmana and was fascinated by their handsome looks. She quickly took the form of an enchantress and approached them. Neither Rama nor his brother showed any interest in her. Enraged by this refusal, Shurpanka rushed to attack Sita. Lakshmana quickly intervened and cut off her nose.
Shurpanaka flew away at once in agony to seek the protection of her brother, the demon king Ravana. Ravana instantly thought of a plan that will avenge his hurt sister and at the same time fulfill his desire to get the lovely Sita for himself. The wicked, powerful, ten-headed demon Ravana was determined to make Sita his own wife. To achieve his aim, he sent the demon Maricha, disguised as a golden deer, to execute his plan. When Sita saw this golden deer, she attempted to catch it. Being unsuccessful, she asked Rama to get its skin for her at all costs. Rama was not convinced of the reality of the deer, but Sita was insistent. At last, Rama had to act and left to trap the deer.
Lakshmana was left behind to guard Sita. While chasing the deer, Rama wandered far away from the hut. As he shot an arrow at the deer, Maricha used a cunning trick. He imitated Rama's voice and called for help. Ah, Lakshmana! Ah, Sita! And gave up his life. When Sita heard the cry, she felt uneasy and didn't know what to do. When she saw Lakshman, she hurried to him and said to Lakshman, Your brother is in trouble. Go and help him at once. Although Lakshman tried to convince Sita that no harm could come to Rama, she compelled him to leave. Before leaving, Lakshmana drew a magic circle around Sita to protect her. instructed Sita to remain in the safety of the magic circle and not to step out of the line and left to find Rama. The wicked Ravana now took his chance he disguised himself as a saint and begged to be given alms in front of Sita's hut. Sita brought some food, but would not cross the line drawn by Lakshman. The saint played another trick and refused to accept such alms and persuaded Sita to lead the circle. If you have to give me something, come out of this circle or I shall return empty-handed," said Ravana, who was disguised as the saint. As Sita did not want to displease the saint, she crossed the line to give the arms. As soon as she did so, Ravana resumed his true form, grabbed her, and carried her away in his flying chariot to his palace on the island of Lanka. Thus, Ravana managed to abduct Sita and take her away from her loved ones.
Sita cried for help and was frightened. But her voice could not reach Rama and the Lakshman. Hearing Sita's cries, Jatayu, the king of vultures, tried to help Sita by confronting Ravana. Jatayu made a brave attempt to rescue Sita and fought bravely, but in vain, as Ravana cut off one of his wings. found no sign of Sita. They wandered through the forest, searching for her, and found Jatayu, who had all devotion for Rama, lying in a pool of blood due to his fight with Ravana. He told Rama 
that Sita had been taken away by Ravana, the demon king of Lanka, and breathed his last in Rama's lap. When Rama and Lakshmana moved on and on in search of Sita, with hope fading, they met a band of monkeys that led them to meet Hanuman, the monkey god. Hanuman agreed to help Rama and Lakshmana. He had numerous powers and was loyal to Rama in the search for Sita. As in his heart, he had always been a true devotee of Rama. Hanuman was able to fly, so he searched far and wide. And at last he discovered Sita in the forest of Ashoka trees, where she had been imprisoned. Hanuman told Sita that Rama had sent him to know about her whereabouts and shows her Rama's ring as a mark of identification. He assured her that Rama would come to rescue her soon. After meeting Sita, Hanuman went to meet Ravana and requested him to return Sita to Rama. In return, Ravana insulted Hanuman and put his super extendable tail on fire. Hanuman flew away, burning all of Lanka along the way back to Rama. He described Sita's whereabouts and explained to Rama that the war is imminent. Together they made plans to rescue her. With the help of the army of monkeys, they built a great bridge of rocks to reach the island, and they all marched across it. Ravana had prepared his own army. One of the greatest battles ever took place in Lanka. It lasted many days. Finally, Rama borrowed a special bow from the gods and with a powerful and magical arrow he shot the evil demon Ravana dead and won the battle.
Rama rescued Sita, and together with Lakshmana, Hanuman, and his army, returned in triumph. Now, at last, the 14 years of exile were completed. It was time to return to Ayodhya, where Rama would finally become king. In the royal city route, Lanterns and garlands decorated the streets. When night came, thousands of small lights, divas, were placed along the route that Rama and his companions would take into the city. The people welcomed their new rightful king. Rama took his place on the throne and ruled the kingdom wisely for many years. Every year, at this time, people celebrate Diwali, the festival of lights. They do this to remember the triumph of good over evil. When Rama defeated the evil demon Ravana, and people lit their lamps to welcome and guide their true king back home. Oh. 